to show others you care. Our memory verse this month is Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. Read it with me. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. That description of a friend sounds just like Jesus to me. Jesus loves us at all times. He is there to help when trouble comes. He is the friend that we all need. Let's put our actions back on this verse to help us remember. A friend, so you're going to make your finger hooks and tap them. A friend loves at all, so you're going to hold your left hand up and then sweep your right hand around. All times. Tap your wrist. Let's try that part again. A friend loves at all times. They, point to a couple people, are there, point to one place, to help. So make a thumbs up, set it in your palm, and pull the whole stack up. They are there to help when trouble, so tent your hands, and then flap them in a panic, trouble comes. So point out and pull it towards you. They are there to help when trouble comes. And all of that is in Proverbs 17, 17. Let's put it all together. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about friendship while we take a look at the story of a guy who stood up for someone when no one else would. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about friendship which is using your words and actions to show others you care. Hey, Carter! Hey, Zeke. I hope you're having a great day! Ooh. Oh, um, Zeke! La, la. Zeke! Zeke! What? What are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to make a new sound. Very cool, but why? Oh, for my band. Some friends and I just started playing together. We call ourselves the Geeky. Well, that is definitely a unique sound. Oh, sorry, band group text. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah, it's just we're trying to decide whether or not to let this new kid in. He's pretty good, but I don't know. If he's good, why not let him in? He's from our rival school. The other guys are not happy about that. Well, you said he's good. Maybe you're the voice that'll help him fit in. I don't know if I want to make any waves. Like the waves you were just making with that fan? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah, sound waves. Have you ever thought about how we make sound? Oh, well, of course. I mean, not really. But it sounds interesting, huh? Get it? Sounds? I've got an idea. Let's make it. We'll need a rubber band some plastic wrap, an empty bowl, some sprinkles, and a big, big speaker. The bigger, the better. Ah, I borrowed this one from my dad. He's so retro. That'll work. Okay, so the first step. Cover the bowl with the plastic wrap. Make sure it's super tight. I hear ya. Get it? Here? Next, secure the wrap with the rubber band. Now, put the bowl as close as you can to the speaker, then add some sprinkles. Right there. Ooh. And the sprinkles. Onto the plastic wrap, Zeke. Oh, uh, right. All right, let's make some noise. A new song. Okay. Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try I can't believe the sprinkles were dancing like that. That's because sound makes things vibrate. Huh. The slower the vibrations, the slower the sprinkles will move. And the faster the vibration, the faster they move. Woo, talk about good vibrations. That was intense. That's because when the speaker plays music, it causes the air around it to, to vibrate. The vibrations move through the air in sound waves, which cause the bowl, the air inside the bowl, and the plastic wrap to vibrate. Which makes the sprinkles dance. And on the flip side, don't vibrations create sounds? Yep. The larger the vibration, the louder the sound. But you don't have to make a big sound to make big things happen. Boom! That's amazing! Let's hear more! Well, it's time for... The Story Before the Story! Today, we're in the Book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. After God sent the Holy Spirit, the new church began to grow by leaps and bounds. 
but the religious leaders wanted to stamp it out. They arrested Jesus' followers and threw them in prison. One leader, a man named Saul, was determined to get rid of as many believers as possible. Saul got permission from the high priest to travel to the faraway city of Damascus and arrest believers there. But as Saul approached Damascus, a brilliant light shone down. Jesus spoke to Saul. Blinded, Saul was led into the city. There he didn't eat or drink for three days. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, Saul's life had been changed in a single instant. He now knew that Jesus was alive. But Saul was still blind, with no idea what would happen next. Saul probably felt completely helpless, until somebody stepped up. Brother Saul? Ananias was a Jesus follower, and he knew the terrible things Saul had done before. But God spoke to Ananias and told him to go and help Saul. Ananias trusted God and went to find the man he believed to be an enemy. You saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. I can see! Immediately, Saul asked to be baptized, and he wasted no time in getting God's message out, preaching in the Jewish synagogues. The people were amazed and confused, but the religious leaders were angry. This man is a traitor. We have to get rid of him. Watch the gates. When he tries to leave the city, we'll capture him. Saul's new friends discovered the plot. They hatched a pretty wild escape plan. A basket? We'll just lower you out through the window. When you land, you'll be outside the city. It was an unusual plan, but it worked. Saul escaped from the city and made his way back to Jerusalem. But he didn't get a warm welcome there either. Isn't he the guy who put my friends in jail? Saul says he's a believer now. It's got to be a trick. It looked like Saul was stuck. The religious leaders wanted to get rid of him, and the Jesus followers didn't trust him. It seemed that there was no way forward until Barnabas stepped up to listen to Saul. Barnabas was a committed follower of Jesus. He had already sold property and used the money to help other believers who were in need. Even his name, Barnabas, was a nickname that means son of encouragement. Now, we don't know for sure why Barnabas trusted Saul's story. Maybe he heard about Saul's time in Damascus from a friend, or maybe God prompted him to believe Saul. Whatever the reason, Barnabas decided to stand up for his new friend. Saul met the Lord Jesus on the road to Damascus. He preached in Jesus' name all over the city. So many people listened that the leaders tried to kill him. Saul is one of us. Because Barnabas was well-liked and trusted, his word meant a lot. Barnabas believes Saul. Well, I guess any friend of Barnabas is a friend of mine. If Barnabas says Saul has changed, that settles it. And so Saul stayed with the Jesus followers. He went everywhere in Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of Jesus. The church in Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, the group of believers continued to grow. And years later, when Saul began to travel and start new churches, Barnabas was one of his most encouraging companions and friend. The end. Wow. It's really cool how Barnabas stood up for Saul when no one else would. Yeah, and because of that, the church grew and more people learned about Jesus. So what's our part in the story? Well, as we heard today, speaking up for someone can have a huge impact, right? Maybe you hear a kid saying something mean or untrue about a friend or classmate. If you stand up for your friend, it can change everything. Like Barnabas and Saul. Exactly. Sometimes speaking up is hard. Like if you do something wrong and someone else gets blamed, it would just be easy to not say anything. Yeah, one time I accidentally broke a vase in our home and my mom thought my little sister did it. Oh, oh, uh, don't worry. I told mom it was my fault. <laughs> Glad to hear it. You can stand up for your friends by including them too, like choosing them for a team or a group project. Or pointing out to others when your friend does something great. Exactly. God gave each of us a voice and a choice of how to use it. When you choose to use your voice to stand up for someone, who knows how you change the world? I think you've got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Friends stand up for each other. They sure do. Your other friends also text a lot. Yeah, I just told them to let the new guy in. 
So he'll make new friends and your band will sound amazing. Way to go. Yeah. My name is Zeke and I'm making waves for friends. Good work, Zeke. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. Oh, hello, 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 hello. As we heard today, speaking up for someone can have a huge impact. Barnabas stood up for Saul when no one else would. Because of that, the church grew and grew and more and more people learned about Jesus. Friends stand up for one another. Say that with me. Friends stand up for one another. Let's think about what this might look like in your life. Maybe there's a kid in your class who is always getting picked on. Imagine how they'd feel if you stood up for them and told the other kids to stop. Or maybe you know that your friend is feeling left out. Everyone knows what that feels like. So what if you did something to help? What if you spoke up for your friend and told your other friends to be sure to include them. Friends stand up for one another. When you find yourself in these kind of moments, it's important to remember that we should treat others the way we want to be treated. When you think about how you would want a friend to respond, that will make you want to stand up for them. Friends stand up for one another. You know what? Let's go ahead and stand up now. We'll head up to small group and chat more about how we can be friends who stand up for one another. Oh, God.